So, so um, I can't believe it. It's only like 10 o'clock, pretty much. Just, just approaching. I'll just, I'll be, I'll just double check. 10.06, right? <laughs> Which is a bit, um, and it's the fourth, and it's raining. And it's only like an hour and a half since I last um, filmed. I'll show you from this side. So you can see my windows all clear from all that snow. There's obviously still snow left because it's only just started raining. But it's actually raining. So I reckon this snow, which you can see everywhere, we'll be lucky if we get some blue sky to film from later. We will be lucky if we get some. But for now, <laughs> we've got rain. Um, I'm not complaining. It can rain all it wants. Um, I'm just contemplating whether or not to zoom in to anything before the snow vanishes. Let's have a little go from here. See what we can get up there. I mean, it is interesting. Obviously, seeing the snow on the roofs or just alone is interesting. And so what we will do, we'll have a look at towards the rocks in a moment. Um, obviously the house looking just in there, you can really see the pyramidation, can't you? Which, whereas normally, without, in fact, I am seeing the, like, advantages to having white sky <laughs> with the white roofs. It definitely makes things look a little bit different. Let me just come up high zoom so I can come in. Well, unless there's anything to zoom into from here. Well, again, it's the same, similar detail, isn't it? The pyramidation. And then across the valley, of course. Um, and the trees, like I said before. Sheltering the land beneath them. It's interesting, a little reflection of the pond thing next to it as well, isn't it? Right, coming off high zoom for a moment. And back indoors. Because what we'll do is, we will have, we will have a look at the sea. At the tops. Well, I'm just gonna have a look first. Actually, actually, I'm going to be very selfish, and I should look first. Um, it looks so trippy. I'll show you. Actually, I don't like filming through glass, but I am gonna do it to show you something. Hopefully, it will pick up. It's the uh, warping. You see, from the rain falling down. Something so simple and basic. It does always make me chuckle if people want to point out and try and make out this glass which I'm filming through. I very rarely film through glass. And if I do, I certainly point it out because it distorts everything. It's not a rocket science to figure out why we shouldn't film through glass. And only a nutter would film through glass and then expect to like point out um, fine details. You know, you could film through glass and point out uh, the warping and how it does alter the perspective. It literally does alter the perspective of things. But you can't use that as a gauge to point out things of interest like any orb activity or any kind of spiritual activity as if you can like really, I mean, you, actually what I'm saying here on one hand is I would never do that. I'd never use glass to film through, uh, try and like point out spiritual anomalies. Um, however, that said, of course, you can see anomalies through glass, um, but it's not accurate. It's not an accurate gauge. And that's why I never do this. And if I do, I point out that I'm filming through glass. And I, I don't tend to point out like anomalies via the glass. Although, if we were going to, then I'd be focusing on things like the interdimensionality of the water hitting it and how... I'd go into details about things which I'm not going to go into now because I don't want to make this into a big thing about why I don't film through glass <laughs> and what I could say if I did. Instead, let's just have a look up here. At least I've not got so much snow that I can't hold it down the window with my head. So obviously here's a school car parky thing, which interestingly enough, well, they must have sort of quitted it last night because it didn't have that much snow there in the first place. And obviously after all the influx of cars, this morning, that's how it's looking. Slushy. Now, looking back up to the top of here, I pointed out this little stargatey thing on my last uh, video because it did look just like a stargate beneath, beneath um, the antennae. And now I think the angle's not great that I've got going on here, but you can see the. Um, 
repetition of design if you look at the tree in the Zanza. It's just, it was really clear earlier when the way the snow was. It made it look so vivid. It's not quite as overt now. And those rocks are still hidden now by the snow. Whereas normally, uh, so yeah, obviously, well not obviously, but normally when I've been filming, you can very clearly see those rocks powering down. Bear in mind where that antenna is, is exactly where the main part of the rocks is, which um, I film, where the initiation entrance thing is. So anyway, I'm going to keep this really brief because what I will do is I will definitely tag on um, a second part. Uh, it's still, it's, it's raining. It is raining. Uh, I've even got the heating on. I feel so like luxurious because I don't really do the whole heating thing. Uh, that, I don't really do the whole heating thing very often because it's expensive. <laughs> so I, I tend to just like wrap up usually and put loads of layers on over to sit here, stand here with hardly any clothes on and the heating blaring out feel very naughty. Hey up, I'm gonna do what I just said I don't do very often. I am filming through the window. I'm just pointing out the crane. It's actually, for once, it is actually uh, carrying something. So, because <laughs> it's a lot of moving around for no apparent reason, where it's got no, no load on it. And it's just like whizzing around. And I'm like, really? I mean, why? Why so much activity for something which has no load on it most of the time? But here it does actually, this is one of the rare times it has a load. What on earth is it carrying? Let's go in a little bit deeper. Um, hang on a sec. Oh, it's kind of it's dropping it down now. How irritating. I'll just hope to God that whatever it was picks up in time on there. Because it looked like a big rock and logs as well. You know, like it looked like forest stuff that were moving. It didn't look like a building supplies, especially where it's directed now, where that's coming down now, isn't really the building estate, it's where you dump stuff which you wanted to move away. Didn't look like building materials, but there again, it might do when it's on the big screen. I never, I should have, had the, should have whipped the window open faster, shouldn't I? I would imagine there'll be enough detail on the big screen to see what that was, but clearly not now. These trees are all fascinating because they all like have um, very clear personalities and when I watch them in gales and stuff like this one here the one in the middle it looks like it's got a face and arms and a body they all have like personalities really clear personalities it's really interesting you know these are like the little anomalies which or maybe not anomalies it's perfectly natural it's just people don't seem to expect it to be like that anyway just pointed out something which I wasn't supposed to point out and other than that, I'm going to go and let's hope this rain clears away all the snow. I, I mean, it's ridiculous actually thinking about it. I should have been at work, starting work in, at half past ten. So, um, I think yeah, today it would have been half ten. So there you go. I could have gone to work because the snow's almost all gone again. Already. And even though even though it's like still messed up because it wouldn't be very, it's not really a riding day for when you haven't got a barn and stuff. It's still a little bit frustrating. It's pouring down actually now. So, never mind. I'm not moaning about the fact I couldn't get to work. I just don't want the snow to like get in the way of um, my life, which I feel incredibly selfish saying because <laughs> if I just had a car, four wheel drive. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, on a serious note, it's ridiculous. We should have snow. Uh, we should have normal winters. And we haven't had normal winters now since about 2011, I think it was. Or 20, sorry, it's 2013, I think. 2013, I think, when we had the winter. Yeah, when we had the snow, which, uh, or 2012 winter to 2013 crossover point. Um, where we had the snow in spring in April time, but it was towards the end of April, that was so bad, it was literally, I'm not exaggerating at all, there was points in the car which were taller than me, and I'm five foot eight and a half, five foot nine-ish. So there you go. Um, it was just incredible, it was, I've never seen anything like it since I was a tiny kid. And even when I was a tiny kid, I've never seen anything like that, because I had it at school, but not since the 80s, like the early 80s. 
um, like the snow we had last time. And since then it hasn't snowed ever more than this. This has been the extent that we have had of any snow since then. And some winds we didn't even have this. So the weather is like seriously messed up. Seriously messed up. Especially for those of us who are like older than... Well, who were born before the 80s, I guess. You'd have to be born before the 80s, I think, to really understand and remember what winters used to be like. Because even though... I say born before the 80s because I was born in 77 and I only barely just remember what winters were once like when I was a kid. But we did still have proper winters then where I remember vividly snow tunnels at school which had been like dug out and it, the snow being taller than us. So I reckon that was around about 1983 time or somewhere around about then. Maybe 98. I don't know, I can't remember the year. Just remember there was a really, really, really bad winter all year. And they were all, you know, it never didn't snow. It always snowed every winter. It's only been this, like, last three years. Just hasn't been anything since that, that year where it literally, like, flooded with snow, except for it was in spring. And it was horrific. And this is really the, like, most snow we've had yet this year. And it's already almost gone. This weather's just nuts. It's so warm. I'm ranting I about the weather. It's so warm though that um, most of my plants have still got leaves on them. Like the, the smaller plants, the stripper one, like the shrubbery rather than the uh, trees. And the trees didn't lose their leaves till really late. So, all right, I'm just gonna show you my cat where she's been licking her hair off, if she'll let me. Ready? Right, good girl. There's a patch here. That's new. You see, she'd grown back. And you, Melly? Everything had grown back. Oh, she's going to try and cover it up. Well, it's the same at the other side of her as well. Base of a, base of a, base of a, here and there. Those are the two parts she's like really, really gone to town on. Honey, Merlin. And she's looking skinny again, even though she's eating actually again now. Had a few days where she didn't really want to eat very much. I have to put this rug like this because my cat, my wonderful, beautiful cat. Yes, you are, Merlin. You are. You're a wonderful, beautiful cat. I don't think she's scared of the camera anymore. She didn't used to like it because I used to take pictures of her. And she, she obviously didn't like the flash. So I stopped doing that because she got to the point where she wouldn't even open her eyes around the camera. So now I just film her. Don't we, Merlin? Or do it in daylight where we don't need to use a flash. So it's not a scary camera anymore. That said, I have some brilliant pictures of my cat from taking pictures of her. Come here, Melly. From taking pictures of her. Come here, come here. <gasps> from taking pictures of her with the flash at night time outside. I have some brilliant pictures of you. Don't, we, don't, we do have some brilliant pictures of her, but I, don't, I can't do it to her anymore. She sees it like a form of torture, so we don't do that, do we, Twirly? No flash. She's exempt from the flash these days. She's purring like a super, it's like a super train. You're a good girl. So yeah, like Merlin's been getting hit again. You know, she's been like ripping her skin off. She slurps. When things are bad, she slurps. That's what she does. Don't you twirly? So, interestingly, when I told my doctor about, I told my doctor, I want to see what he'd say or do. Let's just see the time factor here. He uh, prescribed iron tablets. Now, I'll go into more detail about that later. It's actually very interesting that that's what he's prescribed me. Um, it seems to have made a difference to the fact I'm not getting any more cuts since I started taking them. I'm thinking I need to want to spike my cat with iron too. <laughs> it might help her a little bit. But instead of my head being on fire, my, head, my, my head's been ringing like a bell where my ears kill and it feels it's not like anything like um titanus it's nothing it's nothing like that it's like what happened um around christmas time that's the first time it ever happened and it just feels like implants have been activated or something i don't know how to explain it it's it's just kind of feel like you have your head within a church bell or something so anyway we're almost at time wise so me and twirly will sign out look at her she's so adorable Morning. She wants to escape, I can tell. <gasps> She's got stuck. Go on then. <laughs> um, Alright, I don't know what I was going to show you then. Um, I suppose. I'll say bye, because we're out of time. Say bye, Merlin. Bye.
then he says, I'm perfect. Yeah, we know that. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.